So we're at 71 degrees, and it hasn't been a whole long time in reference to charging. It's only been it's been 10 minutes, you know. Um, like I said, you want to let it run for a little bit because you could overcharge it if you do this too quickly. Uh, after I get it close but under charge, I'm going to let it run for a little bit. But I want to make sure it gets up high enough to where the evaporator coil does not freeze. So on the low side right now, we're at 92 PSI G, okay? Follow that into the pink rose color, and you are at 30 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil. I want to get it at least, at the very least, above 32 degrees, maybe around 35. And then I'm going to let it sit for a little bit and run, All right? Because you could easily overcharge this thing. If you put it right up to the subcooling that you need, um, you can find that you're, you've overcharged it. Because then you let it run for a little bit, and all of a sudden it has way, way, way too much subcooling. Then you have a high compressor ratio, all right, and you're paying too much for energy costs. You know, your system's not working very efficiently, and it's, um, it's going to take a toll on the compressor. It's not good. But this is why evaporator coils freeze when, when if your charge is getting low, you know your your saturated temperature in the middle of that um, evaporator coil is below freezing, 32 degrees, and that's why when you leak too much refrigerant, uh, that's that's why an evaporator coil would freeze. All right, this on here and on here, it's just like a pressure temperature chart. It's, it's basically the same thing, all right? And you just file the needle right in, all right? You can do R22 on this. You could do 410A. You could do 404, uh, 404A. Right. All right, we're getting, getting closer. We're still at about 30, 31 degrees in the middle of the evaporator coil. We'll get that up above freezing, and then we'll let it sit for a little bit. Just be very aware that if you if you do not have a liquid vaporizer, that the uh, take it real easy when you're letting this refrigerant in because you have to charge a 410A system with the bottle upside down that's liquid. Uh, if you don't, then the two refrigerants that make up the 410A bottle are 50 50 50 percent of one 50 percent of another. Uh, they'll charge in it at different rates, and you won't have the the complete pure 410A uh, mix that you desire. All right. And then all the and it messes all the rest of the refrigerant up in the bottle. So you want to make sure that you charge a fourth and eight bottle upside down. You can actually see the bottom of the bottle right here, all right? And just so you know, below you, that's our scale right down there. Okay, our yellow service hose is located right there, and then up here is where we we have uh, all of our temperature stats and stuff. All right. So we're at 32 degrees right now. We're at 32 degrees. Let this thing run for a little bit. We put one pound, 2.4 ounces in. That's quite a bit. All right. All right, 32, 32 degrees. Get up just a little bit higher. We'll make sure there's no chance of freezing in that evaporator coil. All right. But most units you have, you can check the liquid line with the red hose outside of the unit. Um, and it will be in complete liquid form, and the subcooling rating will be lower than what's needed on this unit right here. And once again, this unit is looking for 19 degrees of subcooling between between the discharge line, the very hottest part of the whole system, and temperature at the liquid line. Okay, so this manufacturer designed this specifically to be read this way. Um, I'm sure they've done all types of analysis in their factory and everything like that in order to make sure that this charging procedure is, is correct. But it's a little different than your normal subcooling charging procedure that's taken on the liquid line outside of the unit with the temperature probe within three inches of the service port. One point five ounces of refrigerant charged in so far. 
All right, and now we're going to let it run for a little bit. You could let it run for a decent amount of time, or you could uh, shut it off, let it equalize, um, and then turn it back on again. Let it run this five, ten minutes um, before checking the charge, and then go ahead and check it, check it again. The longer you wait, the more accurate you're going to be, especially when you're putting that much refrigerant in. If it was just two, three, four ounces or something like that, it wouldn't take that that long uh, for the unit to disperse that refrigerant properly and have it be where exactly where it wants to be. Uh, but uh, in this case, since we're putting one, 1.5, or one ounce, I'm sorry, one pound, five ounces in, it's going to take a little bit. All right, sub cooling right now, 80 degrees, all right, 80 degrees in the middle of the condenser coil, and 72.7 um, coming out. So we have seven degrees of sub cooling. We're going to need a lot more than that yet, but uh, for now, that's good. And I'm not adding any in, just happened to put my hand there. 33, uh, 33 degrees, saturated, state in the middle of the evaporator coil. 80 degrees here. We'll let it sit, just to be safe. Better safe than sorry. Now, just say, just say, uh, we wanted to check and see if we were at 19 degrees yet. What we would actually need is this pressure for Fortune A, and you can look at your own pressure temperature chart if you pull one up. DuPont makes some good ones. Um, there's some good ones that they provide you. They can provide you there. Um, but I, obviously, they're also on the gauge sets. So 233, we'll say, okay, PSIG at 79 degrees for Fortune A, roughly, 79 degrees. We would actually need uh, the temperature the actual temperature down at 60 degrees. If this was 79, all right, we would need this at 60 degrees in order to get an accurate charge of 19 degrees of sub -point. And once again, that's because you have the hot discharge line that we're taking this pressure, uh, pressure off of, and the manufacturer's telling us that they want us to take the temperature on the liquid line. So this is different. Thirty-three. All right, we're going to continue to let it run. All right, so just to show you, we put uh, three pounds, two ounces of refrigerant in this unit, uh, so it was missing half of its refrigerant charge. Uh, we have eighty point five degrees over here on the liquid line and we have over here 65.5 degrees on the liquid all right so this is the discharge uh pressure and saturated temps 80 and the actual temperature on the line is 65 uh, or actually this is about 80.5 that's 65 65.5 so we're, we're looking at about uh, 15 to 16 degrees of sub coin all right um we're not dropping any more as we were add refrigerant. I don't want to continue to add refrigerant to this. And uh, if we don't have a superheat, when I check, say, this, this hose right here, if it says I have 33 degrees, I, I want to make sure that I at least have vapor coming into the compressor still. And if I put any more refrigerant in, it's going to not change into a superheated vapor before it gets into the compressor and I, I want to make sure that I'm keeping the compressor safe so I'm not going to add any more charge. I went inside I confirmed that I have 18 to 21 degree temp difference between the return and supply I actually have about 20 to 20.5 so we are good uh, on this refrigerant charge here all right I think if we let this system run a little bit longer um, you know come back another day or something like that this temperature would be dropped down to what we're looking at at 19 degrees. It's just not moving um, right now, and I don't want to put any more refrigerant in uh, just in order to protect the compressor. All right, so we'll check up on this another day. 
Uh, but uh, but that's that. All right. So we did check inside, and we made sure that that did have 20 degrees. We do have a little bit of superheat for the compressor's sake, so that it's not pulling in liquid. And we have about 15 and a half degrees of subcooling. All right. So that's pretty darn close. Um, 15 and a half, 16 degrees of subcooling. Within three degrees, what we're looking for, and it will uh, it will drop over time. But uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.